Llama 3 was launched a few days back and it has taken the world by a storm once again in the open source ecosystem and how Meta is working towards a more open large language model. Let's talk about some of the facts about Llama 3 and how you can run it locally using Olama in this particular video. Before starting, make sure to subscribe to the channel and if you like, please share the video. So Llama 3 was recently introduced by Meta. It is the next iteration or the next uh, generation in the Llama series. So after Llama 2, Llama 3 is the latest one, uh, the latest large language model by Meta. Uh, it has a lot of uh, new things which are there like for first and foremost like Meta.ai. Uh, is something that is being powered now by Llama 3. It comes in different sizes, 8 billion parameters and 70 billion parameters. And yes, they are working towards a 400 billion parameters model as well, which will be way interesting to see how well it can perform some of the tedious tasks. It supports more length of tokens. Uh, I think it's doubled, uh, almost double than the previous generation. It also is available on Hugging Face for download and you can actually try out Llama 3 locally, which we'll be actually doing today using Olama. So let's get started. So Olama is a tool for getting you up and running with large language models locally. It has a lot of models that you can actually see in the model section. So if you go to the model section, you will see the library and it has all the fancy models which are there like Llama 3, Mistral, uh, Mixtral, Llama 2, Code Gemma, and also Lava end-to-end -end train for the vision encoder. Lava model was actually used in the KubeCon demo uh, by Priyanka, if you have seen that. Uh, anyways, it's pretty simple. So what you do is you go to the homepage, you click download, and then you select which operating system you are on. So I'm on Mac, so I download it for Mac. If you're on Linux, you download for Linux. And if you're for Windows, you can download for Windows. And Windows 1 actually recently came and it's still in preview. Uh, so that's pretty much it. It's open source. So you can go and check out the GitHub code for Olama and you can use some of the documentation. We'll also use one thing which is called the APIs. Uh, so how you can actually uh, do the API documentation and call it using the SERP. There are a lot of web UI integrations uh, like open web UI and stuff. We can check one of them later on in the demo. So that's that's about the installation. And once you have it running, so you have Olama. So you click next, you click install. It's already installed on my particular system. So I'll not install. And then we start using the models. How we start using the models is pretty simple. So what we do is Olama and it has different options available. So you have Olama run for running the model, pull for pulling a model, push for pushing a model because you can actually uh, create a new model file with a custom prompt. And you can push that model and you can start using that model so that you have a base defaults of what you want to set for this particular model to start with or to behave as. Maybe you want it to behave as a, a prompt writer. Maybe you want it to behave as a movie reviewer. Maybe you want it to behave as a code reviewer. So you can actually set a custom model and push it. And then Olama list is the list of models. So these are the two list of models that have already you know, download it. So it shows what models are there on my local system now on my Mac. So one is Llama 2 and one is Llama 3. Uh, then you can remove a model. You can, you know, show the model information, create a model file. That, that's what I'm talking about, creating a model file and then pushing a new uh, model from that. And then serve. Serve actually serves it at an uh, endpoint that you can access it via REST API call. And you can also access it via a tools like GPT script. I'll show you how to use it. It doesn't work in an as fancy way as uh, GPT script works with OpenAI. By the way, if you do not know about GPT script, then do check out the live stream that we did with Darren on GPT script. I have put the link in the description. So simply, uh, let's try to run Olama run Llama 3, the new model, and Olama run Llama 2. Uh, what I have done over here is just to show how good Olama, uh, the Llama 3 model is, I just randomly said, can you calculate the square root of 390, 329 and then multiply it by 217? It, it's very roughly correct. So it's 18.13 something. So it is fairly correct over here and it gives you the right result. And whereas here, it's uh, quite off. So it's 13, uh, it's 14 over here in Llama 2 and it gives fairly off result. 
So I don't know how it is calculating the square root in Lama 2. So you can see even the mathematical calculations have improved significantly in Lama 3, which is a very big thing. Uh, so this shows the significant improvement uh, of the Lama 3 model over Lama 2 and then some of the other things as well. Also, we can we can check out some some more things like, you know, summarize this article for me and also summarize this article for me. So this article is the latest Kubernetes article on recursive read only mounts. So blog post on recursive read only mounts. And you can see how the summary is being delivered. So it's more extensive in Lama 3. Lama 3 is able to give more extensive summary with respect to code. So it is able to generate, give the code examples from the article as well and give you the extensified summary. So which is good. And we can like we can keep going, but the main purpose was to show you how you can actually run Llama 3 model locally and also Llama 2 locally and also both of them side by side and also uh, how you can use it via a Python. So what we can do is we can do exit control D and control D is to exit. Now the next thing that we'll try to do is we will try to serve it. So we'll start a server where we can do a curl request or we can do some certain request. So let's do that. Olama sir. So it has started serving and it has started serving on this particular endpoint. So now we'll use this endpoint. Uh, we will use the REST API endpoint and, you know, uh, try to generate a prompt. So let's go to another screen and let's run this. And we have curled uh, the prompt and it is giving the response why sky is blue and it is giving all the response. You know, one after the other word, one after the other word. That is what it is doing. So there are different endpoints. You can see the API documentation. So you can see here everything is written. Generate is a response for a given prompt. And then you have chat. So this is a streaming endpoint. So there will be a series of responses. Streaming can be disabled with streaming, streaming false. And the final response object will be included in the statistics and additional data from the request. So that is what it is. What we can try to do is we can try to kind of run it from Python file and load our own data. So we can use our own data because since it is running locally, we can use our own data and then try to use that particular data to pass it onto the model and get results with our custom data because these models are not trained to the very latest information and also not trained uh, for your specific use case. So uh, what we'll do is, I already have a Python file created. Uh, so in Python, what you can do is you can do import Olama, create a client with Olama client and give the host, uh, which is the local 127.0.0 and 11434, the default port. And here what we are trying to do is we are trying to give a file. So there is a file which we are trying to read, which is this file. So that's the file name. Uh, there is a demo.txt file over there. In that I have put Kubernetes 1.30 text summary. So it will try to summarize the one, Kubernetes 1.30 block. Uh, over there. So in summary, we are trying to call the summarize file with the file name. And when it comes over here, it prompts, the prompt is summarize the text as a single paragraph for LinkedIn. And the response, the chat, we are passing the model and the message. In the message, we are passing the prompt and the text and text is the file dot read the contents of the file. So that is what we are trying to do. Let's try to run it. Python demo. And when we see here, uh, we can see the streaming has already started and it gives all the information uh, from, you know, the tokens, how many tokens are there, uh, what is, what GPU name, GPU family, uh, what other stuff is being used. So it gives all these information. If there is cash available, then it takes from the cash and then it started, start generating from the endpoints and you can see it's 200. So we should already see the result over here. And yes, here is the summary of the notable features. So this is the exciting world of Kubernetes updates, notable features for 1.30. And you can see some of the new features, graduates, deprecation and removal. That's a quick summary of exciting updates in Kubernetes 1.30. Here, what we did is we tried to interact with large language model locally, Llama 3, uh, using the Python code while, while we do the serve over there. Uh, in the next example, what we'll try to do is we'll try to use GPT script as I mentioned before. It doesn't work very well with the Olama models because the function calling is not there. Uh, so it doesn't work as expected. But still, if you want to kind of run it, I have a Llama GPT-3. So in GPT script, uh, what you can do is you can use multi-model. So you can define a model for a particular tool that you want to use. So here, 
I have put model as Llama 3 from the endpoint where it is serving. It won't be able to use the tools. So that is why uh, here I am trying like read the contents of the file in the current directory demo.txt and let me know who is Sayyam Uh So the thing is and cat demo.txt uh, it is like hello my name is Sayyam it should It should print this but ideally it won't. It will just give the uh, random definition that it has from its own knowledge which is like you know um, the old some some old stuff which it already has. So still fine still you are able to interact with Llama 3 but I don't think that's kind of useful unless you use it with OpenAI. So I think that that is still more useful when you are kind of using GPT script. Anyways I just wanted to show. Uh, one last method how you can run it locally is using Wasm WebAssembly. So there is a project called Llama Edge. The easiest, smallest and fastest local LLM runtime. So let's use Llama Edge and try to run it. So it will be uh, running as Wasm Edge with Llama CPP and you need to have the GGML plugin. Uh, so let's see what, what stuff is there. You need to definitely download the model. So I already have the model downloaded and we'll try to run uh, this particular command. So let's run it. So you can see the Wasm Edge GGML Llama stream Wasm. This particular thing is already there and I already have the model available which is Meta Llama 3 8 billion instruction set and you can see it has started running it takes user input uh, so hello uh, what architecture you are based on and which Llama generation model you are not specifically based on any particular architecture multilingual model not specific to generation not a specific generation model like Llama uh, I have a general purpose conversation AI so this is another way where you can run um, Llama 3 using the WebAssembly stack. And you can find more information on the Llama Edge website. That link also I will put in the description of the video. That how it is beneficial and introducing the uh, run Llama SSH all-in-one CLI app to run LLMs locally. And why it is kind of beneficial to run it locally, the Llama web models. And it also has a UI. And yes, you can use uh, something like open UI if we have Docker running. So what we can do is we have Llama running, we have Docker running. We can just try this open web UI to run the Olama UI as well and see. I mean, all the functions that you would be able to use using the CLI, you should be able to use the UI. But if you're a UI fan, UI would make more sense if you are a CLI fan, then CLI would make more sense. Let's give it, so, give it some time for downloading and then we'll explore the UI. Well, meanwhile, uh, the Docker thing is getting pulled. I want to just quickly highlight the file. So what you can do is you can create a model file just like you create Docker file, you can create a model file. So it says like from which model, then set the parameter and the more closer to one, it is more creative, lower it is more coherent uh, with respect to the prompt that you set. Uh, set the context window size. This controls how many tokens the LLM can use. I think it's 8,000 for uh, for Llama 3. So you can put 8,000 over here for Llama 3. And now you set the custom message to specify the behavior of the chat assistant. And you should be able to like create a model. So we can actually use it. VI model file. And just take Llama 3 over here. Maybe... Let's leave everything else the same. And then what we'll do is we can use Olama create and we can name it cube simplify hyphen f dot slash model file. And it's a success. So what we can do next is we can try to run that model. And yes, it has started running the Olama. Uh, model who are you I'm it's me Mario and it started off with the prompt custom prompt that we gave so that's how you can create your new models okay so our docker image has been pulled and it's running so let's go to localhost 3000 enter username password and it should give you uh, what you with web UI let's go and here's a little chatbot that is there and you can select a model so it will list the model which are available on your system and it gives you a chat GPT kind of interface to interact with. Hello, which Llama model are you and which 
architecture you are based on so i'm specifically variant of llama and this is the kind of architecture and the training data that is kind of based on yes i am indeed an instance of llama 3 so it is good and uh, we can have documents so you can um, import documents here itself and you should be able to do it you can discover download explore custom prompts you can have custom model files created over here so whatever you can do locally using the cli you should be easily able to do with the gui so if you are a gui fan go for the web ui if you are a cli fan use the cli in any case you this these are very great if you are running your own kind of models you are having your own sensitive kind of data so that's pretty much it that i have to share with you with respect to the llm models how you can run them locally using webassembly using olama and also kind of interact using gpt script uh, a more detailed video on creating a tooling on gpt script will be coming soon but for now this is how you can run your local large language models and i think olama is uh, great and then you can have a gui on top of it and then use the gui to interact with the components in a ui kind of manner which is even more easier and simpler and developer friendly so that's it for llama if you like the video uh, try it out if you try it out then do a uh, shout out on twitter like this is how you found about it and you are trying it out the olama models or any of the other open source llm models uh, locally using olama Uh, thank you so much for watching the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel and share the video as much as you can and make sure to check out all the other content cloud native stuff on kip simplify